Well, the name's Gary Davis. I'm a professor of strategy at Manchester Business School, but my key focus research-wise and teaching-wise is the management of reputation. Traditionally, reputation was seen as something that you had to defend. It quotes like, on every word a reputation dies. Uh, every CEO would have heard things like that and that crisis management is, is maybe part of their role, that when there are problems with an organisation, a large organisation, we want to hear from the, the person at the top of that organisation. So I think most CEOs traditionally would have seen reputation under the, the, the issue of defence and risk. What we've done at MBS over the last 10 years is to show how it can be used positively to promote the bottom line. The old question really before our work was, if we are profitable as an organisation, is that what's causing our good reputation or is it that reputation is driving profitability? Um, I don't think there's a very clear link between reputation and profitability. I think the easier idea to, uh, to respond to, the easier link to see, is from reputation to sales growth and from sales growth to profitability. One of the ways of creating reputation is through your CEO. The CEO literally personifies the organisation, not only to members of the public, if they're media friendly, but certainly to members of the organisation. Our research demonstrates in a service culture the uh, reputation of the organisation as seen by employees is key. Now that sounds a bit strange. You'd expect it to be the reputation seen by customers, but customers get a lot of their um, emotional attachment or the lack of it from their interaction with employees. And if you meet an employee that's clearly enthusiastic about the organisation that they work for, goes that extra yard, then that will spill over onto the customer. It will have a positive influence on the customer. Who will spend more? Who will recommend your organisation to their friends and family? No problem. But where does the employee get their positive views of the organisation? Quite often from a charismatic CEO. A CEO whose abilities include leadership, inspiring enthusiasm, promoting this lovely word that everyone talks about these days of engagement amongst their employees. In my lifetime, the media has changed dramatically. I think the biggest change came from the advent of the internet and the immediacy that the media became in terms of its impact on both the customer and the employee. Uh, there's, there's a joke. If I want to find out what's happening in my company, uh, do I look on the notice board? No, I log on to whatever's being said about my organisation at the moment by the media. And, and words, facts, fiction about an organisation can spread around the globe in seconds these days. Traditionally, then, a company could put a brave front on it. They could say, they could deny. They could blame other people. Uh, these days, that is incredibly difficult to do. Nowadays, the vast majority of managers that we train will be in the services sector. They will find their career in the services sector. In the services sector, that sort of cultural angle is so, so important and the tone that the CEO sets and it's the media that often acts as the filter, either positively or negatively, for that individual to express his or her values to the organisation and to the public and obviously to the customers of the organisation in particular. Mm -hmm.